MySQL has a ton of options that you can utilize to tune the performance and adjust the behavior of the database. In fact, in MySQL's most recent release, there were over 500 options that you could use to configure here. The one that I want to focus on in this video is InnoDB buffer pool size, and there's a few ones related to this as well. And this option is absolutely key to squeezing out the performance of your database and the underlying hardware that your database is running on, particularly the amount of RAM that your server is utilizing. Now, to better understand how this buffer pool works, it helps to think a little bit about the underlying architecture of the computer. Of course, computers have CPUs, and the CPU is responsible for executing the instructions of your program, including MySQL. But if MySQL is going to function, it of course needs to read your data from somewhere, your data, your tables, your indexes, and so on. And this comes from whatever your long-term storage is, right? The solid state drive or spinning disk drive on the server. However, the speed of even a solid state disk or a solid state drive is much slower than how quickly a CPU can access stuff. So we want some form of faster memory that sits in between your solid state drive and your CPU. And this of course is your RAM on your system. Now, as you probably know, the RAM on a computer is generally much smaller than the solid state disk drive. Oftentimes RAM is measured in gigabytes, whereas storage is potentially measured in terabytes. So what happens if your MySQL database on disk is larger than the available RAM that you have on your server? As MySQL executes and needs to read data, it grabs data from disks and loads it into RAM in the form of pages. So these are 16 kilobyte pages, and that's essentially the chunk that it can load things into from disk into RAM to be able to utilize. The size of the pool of memory that it gets to load these pages into is known as the InnoDB buffer pool size, at least if you're using an InnoDB storage engine for your database. As MySQL is running, if it reaches a point where this buffer pool gets full, but it still needs to read additional pages in order to fulfill a query, it will have to evict pages from the cache to make room for new ones. So this buffer pool is basically acting as a cache, right? It's a region of RAM that can be used to store pages from disk. And if pages are available in disk, MySQL will be able to access them more quickly. If they're not, it will take a little bit longer because there will be a disk IO that needs to take place. Let's look at an example of this working in action. So I have a database that is a little bit over four gigabytes on disk. So it's uh, four different tables. There's an answer table, an attempt table, a question table, and a user table. And if you sum up those values there, it comes out to a little over four gigabytes. Let me show you what the schema for this looks like. So this is a made up schema for some kind of quiz application. So there is a table that represents a question, and this has a couple of columns on here. There's a table that represents an answer. Um, there's a table that represents a user of this application, and then one more table for representing a user attempting to answer one of the questions, right? So a very uh, simple schema, right? Only four tables, so nothing too complicated. And then I also do create two indexes on this. I'm also gonna show you this load script that I have here. And this is a script that I'm going to use to throw some made up workload at the database, which will allow me to compare InnoDB performance. So jumping down here, what happens is uh, this is actually can be a multi-threaded program. So I can spin up multiple threads that simultaneously make queries to the database. So I create uh, a bunch of connections to the database. I print out a couple of pieces of information about how the buffer pool is configured create the threads as necessary, and then I start those threads up, let them execute, allow them to finish, and then print out timing information. Now the function that actually runs the workload is this run load function, and that's up here. And basically what this does is it just executes a bunch of queries on the database. So uh, each iteration of this for loop, it executes 25 queries, one on the user table, two on the question table, two on the answer table, and then a bunch on the attempt table. I'm gonna show you over in MySQL what the buffer pool size is currently set to, and the value here, this represents five megabytes, which is the smallest size. That's a very, very small buffer pool, but I'm gonna to go to the extreme here to try to help drive home the point. So with a very small buffer pool, 
I'm going to run a test, but first let me show you this command as well. So you can actually ask for status about the InnoDB engine. And as the load that I'm gonna execute is running, it will be able to show me what the hit rate of the buffer pool is. And if the hit rate is high, then that's uh, good. But if it's low, that is meaning that there's extra IO that's causing worse performance. So I'm gonna run my script. I'm gonna say Python 3 load.py a scale of uh, 1 million. And then I'm gonna execute 100,000 queries on it. And then I'm just gonna have it do it on one thread. So that finished executing and it's reporting that it took 27 seconds and it had about a 3.7 thousand queries per second. Now this is a little bit unfair because one of the things with the buffer pool cache is it's important to allow it to sort of warm up as a cache, right? And I had just started the MySQL server a little bit ago. So I'm gonna run this again to see if we get slightly better performance the second time around. So this is an improvement, but this is still ultimately not all that great. And one of the big limiting factors that's going on here is this small buffer pool size. So in fact, if I execute this one more time, and while it's running, if I go ask for the InnoDB status, one of the things that you can see is the buffer pool hit rate. And that hit rate right there, 617 over 1,000, that's a pretty bad hit rate. That means that there's a lot of misses which are leading to an IO operation in order to fulfill the query request. So if you see a buffer pool hit rate of that value, that's a bad sign and that probably needs means you need to increase the size of your buffer pool. And if we go back over here, you can see the performance actually improved even more compared to the last one, but it's still within that 4,000 queries per second range. So next up, I'm gonna change the size of the buffer pool. So I'm gonna open up the configuration file. And then in here, I'm gonna change the buffer pool um, chunk size as well as the buffer pool size itself to be a much bigger value of five gigabytes. So if I save this and then I restart, which will take a little bit, I'll then be able to re-execute this test with a larger buffer pool and see how it compares to the performance of that other one. I'm gonna clear this and I'm gonna execute that same Python script and I'm gonna to have to execute it a few times again for stuff to actually have a chance to load into the buffer pool. So that first run finished and already a significant improvement. It's in the 5,000s, but I bet if we run it again, we're gonna get even better performance. Wow, so that one was a significant improvement. And again, with this one, there's so much space in the buffer pool that basically if I go over here to look at what's the InnoDB status, the hit rate is extremely good. And as I keep executing this test, it should actually just keep getting better and better. 971 over 1,000 because more and more of the database is getting pulled into memory. Wow, so we're up to 12,000 over here. Hit rate 984 out of 1,000. So this is leading to much less misses in the cache, which as you can see, each time I execute this, uh, this workload on the database, it's leading to better and better performance. So just changing that one configuration option, or two I guess, I also changed the chunk size, can lead to a significant improvement in terms of how quickly MySQL can churn through this large query workload that I'm throwing at it. If you ever find yourself in a situation where you need to manually configure a MySQL server, make sure to pay attention to what the buffer pool is configured to be. A good rule of thumb is to set this to somewhere around 70 to 80% of your server's available RAM but this depends on other factors, including whether or not there's other important processes running on that same server. Thanks for watching this video. I appreciate you being here. If you liked it, hit the like button or subscribe to our channel, and I will see you in the next one.